everyone and welcome back to Stamp with Anna and today I'm going to share with you a pinwheel tower Christmas card. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of these uh, pinwheel tower fun fold cards on online um, so I thought I would just take a moment to share with you the one that I have made and this one here it's um, it's not quite monochromatic but it's all um, grays and silvers to have a sparkly Christmas um, theme to it. Now I know it's going to be hard to get the full effect of this on camera, but I'm going to lift this up so you can see how this card works. So you can see this is where it gets its pinwheel name because of the shape of it. Okay, And when you have it folded, it does fit in a regular envelope. This is four and a half by, for, excuse me, four and a quarter by five and a half. So it's the standard A2 card. So this is your front. This would be page two, if you're gonna think of it as a book. This would be page three. And this is the last page. And so when it is standing up, again, I'm gonna try to show you this. Um, so you can get the full effect of it. Here is, comes out of the envelope. And here it is held up and you flip. Page one, page two, page three, and then you're back to page one. I know it looks a little complicated, but trust me when I tell you, it is so easy to make. So. I'm going to just explain and tell you what the products I'm using are as we go along rather than give you a litany of, um, of what I'm using. So I'm going to put the card aside, okay? And the first thing we need to do is make our tunnel, which is this tube here. And for that, I have a piece of basic white cardstock. This is four and one quarter by four and one quarter. Okay, now I'm gonna score this, and these score measurements are super easy. I'm going to score at one, at two, at three, and four. Okay. So here we have four and a quarter by four and a quarter scored at one, two, three, and four. So you have this one little sliver of quarter inch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a box out of this. So we're just gonna bend and fold on all of our score lines. You can certainly use a bone folder to reinforce those, okay? So as you can see, this is how it's going to go together. We're going to take this last piece and attach it to that one quarter inch sliver. Now, to make it, you're not gonna really see this uh, when it's all put together, but to make it nice and finished and do it right, you are going to put the tab on the inside. If you put it on the, the tab on the outside, you're not gonna be able to see that anyway. So if you make a mistake and it ends up on the outside, don't worry about it. So now we're going to open this up and I'm gonna use liquid glue for this because liquid glue gives me a little bit of um, freedom if I make a if I don't line it up quite right the first time so I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue and I'm going to run it along that tiny strip now because this if this was cut right and scored right and evenly this will go together no problem so, okay so now we're going to put this together you could take this and just line it up like this or because it's a square you can just bring this fold down, take the second one, go to the second crease, and just bring it over. And it should fit perfectly. Whichever way you are more comfortable putting it together. Okay? So there is our tube. All right? Now, the next thing we have, <clears throat> I have used Smoky Slate. I have four pieces of smoky slate, and these are all cut four and one quarter 
by two and three quarters. And these are going to be these panels here on my pinwheel. So again, I'm going to use liquid glue because I wanna have that little extra few seconds to, to adjust if I'm wrong in my, my placement. And I'm going to put some liquid glue on one panel, okay? I'm gonna take my smoky slate and I'm going to line it up as best as I can right up to the edge here, okay? You really, you wanna try not to have any white showing, like on this one here, I have a sliver. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's, it's not a problem if you do. Okay, so there's one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue. And I'm going to do the same. And I'm always going to have the, the piece of the tunnel to the left of me, okay? So all of my panels are going in the same direction. Okay, so there's number two. Now I'm gonna open this up again. And here's a third one. And again, line that up as close as I can so there's no white showing. Okay. And then I have the last one. Whoops. This one came off. I'm going to open this up. And I have one more. Now, this is the basis, the base of the pinwheel card, see? There it is, so you can see. That's it. Now, the, the rest of it is just a matter of decorating it however you want. Now, when I made this, when I made my, my sample, I had an idea of what I wanted to do and I just put my pieces together and then I, you know, plopped them in and I found that it didn't flow in the order that I wanted it to flow in. So I would suggest that you kind of sketch it out and you have a, an idea before you dive headstrong into it. So you're not pulling things apart like I did. Now I have, I have used smoky slate. If you had used white, you would have these panels empty and you could keep them empty. I chose to use the smoky slate because I decorated each panel. I don't have any whites. So, uh, so I've decided that this is my front page. And I know that these three pages, well, this page, this side panel, and this page all have um, emb heat embossing on them. And so I'm going to do that all together, but I'm not going to attach anything yet. And to do my um, stamping, I've used the Snow Wonder stamp set. I've used Happy Christmas, I've used these snowflakes, and I've used this snowman. So I'm going to, first I'm gonna do the silver embossing, and then I wanna talk to you about how I got him um, smoky, embossed in Smoky Slate. So I have a piece of scrap paper here and my Merry Christmas is on this white piece. This matte piece is four by two and a half. Okay, you see that. So if I had used a white base, I wouldn't have to put this matte on. I could just stamp right on my white base. But I decided to use a sturdy, um, colored base to pick up my theme of um, gray and silver for Christmas. So this one here, as I said, is four by two and a half. Okay. Then on the next page, I have this panel here, and this is four by one and a half. And there's that sliver there. So I'm going to heat emboss these first. I have my Versamark. Well, first I'm going to use my embossing buddy. 
and I'm going to run that over my papers. And you know, like I said in my last videos, I took the summer off this summer and I didn't post, I posted almost nothing on social media and I didn't create almost anything in the summer. And um, my videos, I told, I came back and I was kind of at a loss. I'd forgotten how to make a video and how to get myself set up. So bear with me as, um, as I go through and reacquaint myself with everything. So I'm going to stamp the Happy Christmas and I'm going to come down, oh, about a third of the way. I'm gonna go straight down and straight up. Then I'm gonna come in with my snowflakes, ink those up with my Versamark as well. And I'm going to just randomly place these. Some are off the page, I mean off the strip. Some are right on the strip. So you just want to stagger them. And it's hard to see the uh, Versamark on the white. Okay, so they're all there. And now I'm going to come in with some um, silver embossing powder. And I'm going to sprinkle both of my cards. Okay. Carefully lift this up so I don't smudge. Now I see that I have a little bit of um, stray, I must have had a little bit of ink right there on my, um, on my stamp. I'm just going to, with a soft paintbrush, clean that up so that none of this gets embossed. And now I have my silver one. I'm going to do the same thing, flick the back of it, turn it over. And I see I have a little bit right there. I'm going to just clean that off. I love embossing and especially with the metallics. Oh, I just think it looks gorgeous. And then with, again, with my soft paintbrush, I'm gonna go around and wherever I see some stray flakes, I'm gonna just try to brush them off. Okay, now I'm gonna put that aside and put all of my embossing powder back into my container. Now I have my heat gun and I'm going to emboss this. And I'll just show you uh, as it gets started and I'll do the rest of it off camera, okay? So let me just push this nice into view. And you'll see like magic, when the embossing powder starts to melt, see how it just turns into an absolutely beautiful, shiny, silver snowflake. Okay, so I'm going to finish doing this and the Merry Christmas off camera, and then I'll come back and show you uh, a couple different ways that you can do the snowman. Okay, so my two silver pieces uh, my two panels with silver embossing are done and I'm going to put those off to the side. Now the next thing that I embossed is this snowman and he is embossed in smoky slate. Now many years ago Stampin' Up! had smoky slate embossing powder so I would do just what I did with my snow with my snowflakes. I would stamp the, the um, image and then I would emboss with the smoky slate. But if you don't have the color that you want in an embossing powder, there's still a way for you to be able to emboss. And you do need, well, you don't need need, but a Stamparatus uh, comes in handy for that. So here's my Stamparatus. I've already set it up. Here's my paper and here is my snowman. So when I come down, my snowman is exactly where I want him to be. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to ink up my snowman using smoky slate. And I'm gonna come down and press. And there he is in smoky slate. Then I'm gonna come in with my Versamark. I'm going to just clean this ink off 
of him trying not to move him at all. And with my Versamark, I'm going to come in and ink him up with Versamark. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring him back down. And because I'm using my Stamparatus, that Versamark ink is going right over the... Um, right over the smoky slate. So when I put my embossing powder on this, the embossing powder is going to turn um, clear. Excuse me. The embossing powder is going to turn smoky slate. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. And here he is. So he has a layer of smoky slate underneath and a layer of Versamark on top. And now I'm gonna put it on my scrap paper and I'm gonna take some clear embossing powder and sprinkle it. Now because it's clear, that first layer of smoky slate is going to show up. Okay, so. Let me get my heat gun. And we're going to heat emboss him. And as you can see, when the, the embossing powder is melting, the smoky slate, which was the original color, is coming through. See how you can see that? And again, rather than have you wait for me to um, emboss everything, I'm going to go off camera and then I'll come back and show you the end result. Okay, so here is my embossed snowman. Let me see if I can move them around so you can see the shine of where the embossing came through. So let me show you this one. Oh, where is it? This one here, I did, I embossed it, and you can see his shine as well. I embossed it using smoky slate embossing powder that I had from many years ago. So this is no longer available to purchase, but you can still make, get your, a different color of what you want. And here is this one here, the smoky slate. I stamped him with a layer of smoky slate ink. And then because I used the Stamparatus, when I re-inked that stamp with Versamark, that Versamark went right on top of my smoky slate. When I sprinkled clear, embossing powder when the embossing powder melts that smoky slate comes through so you can do it in two different ways this way um, the way I did it with the Stamparatus it is a good way to do it if you don't have embossing powder in the particular color that you need so that's all the embossing we need to do so now I'm going to um, start to put my card together and again this is my the front of my card so here is my Merry Christmas, okay? Before I attach that, I'm going to add some ribbon. And the ribbon that I used is this beautiful ribbon from the holiday catalog that is now out and it's called Glittered Organdy Ribbon. And this is probably about 12, 13 inches. So I'm going to just bring this in and make a quick bow. And as I was telling the ladies at class, I always know when it's time to have my nails done because I can't tie a bow. My nails get in the way. Here's my bow. I'm just gonna fuss with it a little bit till I get it to look the way I want it to look. So I'm happy with that bow, and now I'm just going to attach it to my page. And I have my adhesive. And I'm going to put that right there. Okay. 
Now, this page here, this panel here, was done with the um, designer series paper that's in the, I think it's called Peaceful, yeah, Peaceful Place. One side is um, regular paper and the other side, the flip side of each design is, um, has little glitter, not glitter, has um, shine to it. So I used this piece here and I just cut out the tree that I wanted. And the uh, size of this is, again, um, one and a half by four, the same as the size of the snowflake one. I'm going to attach that here, okay? So that's page one of my card. I'm gonna open it up, and page two is the snowman on the right. and the snowflakes on the left. Now on my snowman, I decided to bling them up a little bit because gotta have a little bit of bling, right? So I'm using some um, jewels, basic jewels, and I'm just going to put some on the um, snowman's buttons okay Put one there oh. and I'm gonna put one right there in the center of his berries just one and for good measure because like I said you can never have enough bling I'm just gonna scatter some and I could obviously put some on the other section here where I have little um, spaces. So see here, I have this kind of wide space there. I'm just gonna add one right there. And because I like to do things in odd numbers, I'm gonna add a third one to this, to this panel and I'm gonna put it right there. Okay, so that dresses up our snowflake, snowman page just a tad. Okay, now I'm going to do the third page. And as you can see on my sample, this one's going to be really easy. From the same uh, designer series paper, I have another strip, and this is kind of a shiny snowflake, keeping with our snowflake theme. And again, look at the beautiful backside. Again, it is one and a half by four. And I'm going to put that right there. And then I have my white, which it, I'm just going to stamp my sentiment. That is going to be my, um, the page that I sign my card on. Let me just find my ink. Here it is. So I'm going to use Smoky Slate and I'm going to ink up my stamp and then I'm going to come down straight down and straight up and it says may the happiness of family the joys of friendship and the warmth of love surround you this season now you'll notice here the important words happiness joy and warmth are all a little bolded they're a different font and they're bolded at first glance, you look at it and you think it was a uh, an inking issue. But once you notice it, it you see that those are just accented words. Those are the important words of the sentiment. And that's going to pop right here. Now, and this is where I'll, I'll sign the card. Now, this is the back part of the card. If you're going to stamp this and you want to put, have a place to stamp your name, you know, created by, this is where you would put it. This is your back. However, I chose not to have a space to sign it because when my card is standing up like this, I'll try to see if I can show it to you the best way. And when it's standing up like this, this is the front of the card. When I'm holding it down, 
these pieces here, if I didn't have anything decorative, they would be blank and they would just look, you would see that. And I wasn't nuts about that part. So one thing you could have done, I could have done was just decorated this panel and put my stamp on this side. I chose to forego my stamp this time and just make two panels uh, decoratively. So for that, I am going to use one of the embossing folders that's in the Wintry 3D embossing folder set. And these are obviously 3D sets, and it comes with this uh, fur and this snowflake. And since we're, our theme is snowflakes and snowmen, I'm going to use the snowman one. So I'm going to use my mini Stampin' Emboss machine. And I have two sheets of paper. One is that same side panel side size, one and a half by four, and the other is two and a half by four. And I'm going to just slip them into my folder. Now the folder is not large enough to put both of them in at the same, uh, at the same time. So you could run them through separately. Okay, or I guess you could probably run them through this way. Put one on top of the other. We'll see if that works. Okay, I think it should work, but we'll, we'll double check. And I'm gonna run this through. And moment of truth. There they are, they did it did work. Okay, great. So now I'm just going to attach that to the back side of my card. And um, liquid glue is a good adhesive to use when you're um, adhering embossed images like this, especially when they are um, 3D embossed, so they're deeply embossed. But for the sake of time right now, I'm just gonna use my regular tape runner. And so there we have it, our beautiful Pinwheel Tower Christmas card. And again, it is page one, page two, Page three, where, are, where I will sign, and page four. And I guess I'm just having a thought right now. If before I ran this through my embossing folder, I stamped my um, stamp created by and then embossed it, that would be a way to get my stamp on my, uh, my creation. So I hope you enjoyed this card, and I hope that it shows up well on, on the camera. It's always tricky to try to get the full effect of it when it's a 3D card. But if you have any questions at all about this project or any of the products I used, please contact me through my blog, www.stampwithanna.blogspot.com. And if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And um, hop on over to my blog and sign up to receive my... Um, weekly newsletters, which I promise will be um, coming out again fairly regularly. Like I said, I did take the summer off. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this and come back again. The next card we make will be another Pinwheel hol Tower holiday card, but it's going to have a different twist in it. Thanks so much and have a great day.